Hi, everybody. Uh, so now I'm thinking that it's just now gone live. YouTube has been a little bit weird. So I think I was trying to go live a couple minutes ago, but I think we're now officially live. So good morning, everybody. Um, I hope everybody's having a good day. And uh, yeah, it feels like a good day to explore the galaxy. Oh man, is this, is this coming through on OBS? I sure hope so. It doesn't look like it is right now. Yep, all good now. Seems official to me. Okay, so the one thing I want to make sure though is that we're actually getting... You guys can hear me. Okay, great. So you guys can hear me. That's fantastic. But what I'm really thinking about now is why it's not coming through on OBS and therefore not coming through on the stream as well can't see anything yeah that there you go now it should be coming through I can hear but I don't see anything I think you guys should be seeing it here in just a few seconds if not like right now I love that new theme new theme is brilliant Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming in, stopping by. Today is officially Mass Effect Day. Uh, God, it's been a long time coming, huh? There was a lot of people who thought that this day would never come. What have they to say now? Goddamn. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Let's go! Uh, brilliant, I tell you. Brilliant. Uh, going through the options here. Controller vibration, good. Uh, gameplay feedback, crash reporting, font size, that should be fine, language English, great. That's good right there. Uh, Glennis says, I can hear anything, can or can't? I think you guys should be able to hear, it should be game audio and voice coming through good, at least that's what it says on OBS. Oh man, I, like I literally don't even know what to say. I, I, I have felt anxious and nervous and ready to jump into this all morning since last night, all week, let's be honest. It, it felt like 2007 again. It honestly felt like 2007 again, waiting for November 20th to come around. So we could jump into Normandy, so we could be a Spectre, so we could explore the galaxy. It, it's it's freaking outstanding, honestly. Um, Snail, I have sound and visual, perfect. Uh, perfect, perfect, okay. This starts us with the launcher. Let's go ahead and get into Mass Effect 1 proper here. Is it weird that I'm anxious? Like, it's weird that I'm kind of nervous, actually, to even just be playing this. This has been, I'm like, you know, for, for those, I mean, I assume this is a lot of the regulars. I don't know how many people are just coming in because YouTube is just throwing, you know, anything Mass Effect legendary into people's recommendations, etc. But I have been a huge Mass Effect fan since before the first one even came out. 13 playthroughs, multiple insanity runs, you know, did every single achievement back when it was on Xbox. Um, I think the, I think Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, other than the Halo games, are the only games that I've ever gotten every single achievement on. Uh, some people are saying there's a black screen. Yes, there is a black screen right now, but I think it's just because it's switching... It's trying to switch into an HDR mode, which I don't appreciate, but it's gonna come back here in a second. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Let me know, can you guys hear the, uh, the music from the ME1 screen? Probably can. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and alt tab out of it and then come back in and maybe that'll get us back on screen. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, it looked like it was kind of switching the mode that the monitor was in and maybe that affected OBS picking up the stream, but it should come back here in a second. I'll wait so we can catch up. I'm just going through options right now. Go ahead and turn subtitles on. Music is there, no visual. Okay, okay, just uh, let's see if we can't give it a second or two. Yeah, I know, the music is fantastic, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, 
Emma in the chat says the music makes me so nostalgic. I completely agree. It makes me nostalgic also. I, like, I don't know how else to put it. Um, there you go. You guys should now be back on. You guys should now be back on. Oh, good lord. I don't like how it looks, though. That's really weird. At least on the OBS preview, it looks highly saturated. But that might just be. That might just be me. It may be because of how my monitor is deciding to do this. Uh, oh man, we actually have options here. Okay. V-Sync on, motion blur on, dynamic shadows, that's correct. This is all correct. I'm gonna turn film grain off. I mean, you guys let me know how it looks. To me, it looks a little too washed out on my monitor that I'm actually playing on and on the OBS. Uh, it just looks very, very oversaturated. So I, I think it has to do with the way my monitor is trying to process this. It's just kind of annoying. Okay, here we go. I want to I want to turn off HDR. Yeah, because the HDR on every game is basically broken. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. That actually looks correct now. Yeah, no, no, that, 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 I needed to turn off HDR because that was just awful. Uh, I am going to turn down audio a little bit because I do sense it's probably a tad high. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to turn that down a little bit. Controls, uh, Mako camera, so yeah, we'll leave the Mako stuff. I, I want to try out this new Mako control. Sound graphics, gameplay, uh, we're going to go with classic leveling mode. Uh, the new legendary leveling mode basically changes it from 1 through 60 to 1 through 30. So the new level cap is 30, and you're still able to upgrade all of your skills. They changed it because typically you needed two playthroughs to get to max level, um, which is actually not true. You can actually make it to max level if you do every single thing in the game and you have it on Insanity. Uh, and we are going to be playing on Insanity. Auto level up is going to be off. Subtitles on for you guys. Uh, auto save, enable tutorials, what the heck, why not? Squad power usage, always on defensive because I don't want them to be on cooldown when I want to use them, when I want to use their powers. Achievements, oh my lord, okay. Um, Uh, Mr. Blue in the chat, have you jumped into any of Melee yet, or is this your first time jumping <laughs> in? Uh, fun fact, I found out that the game actually released on PlayStation at 11 my time, 11 p.m. my time last night. Uh, and I was really hype, and I don't care about money. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I had bad impulse control, been working a lot of overtime, there's a little, there's a little extra cash, and I was just like, I really don't care. I'm not going to refund either version, I just want to play it on PS5, just to compare it. Uh, so I did I did get through Eden Prime last night uh, on PlayStation. It looks phenomenal in 4K 60 FPS. Right now I'm playing at 1440p on my PC, but uh, yeah, it was fantastic. All right, guys, uh, look, enough preamble. We've been at this long enough. Let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. All right, y'all. Um, I I will say this. I am going to try and let a lot of this stuff play. Um, I'm normally pretty chatty during streams, but I think Mass Effect is one of the greatest story-driven games of all time. And so for the sake of that, and especially for people who maybe haven't um, ever really played it, and who are going to be watching this, you know, archived or watching it live right now, I'm going to try and shut up um, during a lot of the cutscenes. So, fair warning. Um, I will do custom. We, I am going to go with the... Please log in to access your profile. The new default female Shepard, just because it's kind of cool that it's in Mass Effect 1. Um... And so that's something that I that I want to uh, kind of see for myself. Um, I played as Warning. default male shepherd on PlayStation detected. Five as Please far as the file I started last night. Profile. Uh, yeah, fem shep, fem shep for sure. Um, we are going to do this. We are going to go with. 
Of course, um, the spacer to me, I feel like that's almost like the more canon one where both of your parents are in the military. Um, you're basically like signing up right away. Colonist is really perfect to pair with like Lone Survivor if you really want to do that almost sort of traumatized Shepard. And Earthborn, I think, is kind of counterintuitive. You would kind of think Earthborn is kind of more that canon feel to it, but because you were sort of in gangs and because you kind of had this rough upbringing on Earth, Orphan, um, I feel like it kind of makes for a better redemption story. Also, I love the side quest. Um, there's there's one side quest associated with each of these backgrounds, and I love the side quest that you get with Earthborn because one of your old gang members is like trying to get you to do some shady stuff, yada yada. Um, but I love the spacer background just because you get to meet Shepard's mom, which is kind of cool because it's Mom Shep. Confirm psychological profile. Um, again, I mentioned Soul Survivor. Uh, this is this is uh, basically a terrible experiment that happened on a coos. It actually this is actually great for ME2 because it has synchronicity with the Cerberus angle. So you go really against Cerberus if you have this background. Um, War Hero is pretty much what you would think during the Skillian Blitz, which was a major battle in the first Contact War. You were basically a hero in that battle. Um, and Ruthless is Torfin, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it's not Torfin. Maybe that's where the side quest related to this background takes you. But it's on one planet where you had to make a tough choice and a bunch of people died, but you got the mission done sort of thing. Ruthless is probably my least favorite as far as the uh, psychological profile. I'm going to go with War Hero. Confirm military specialization. Uh, Danius, Dinius in the chat says, great story, great game, great characters. I completely agree. Ricky Lamb, Shepard's mom, where? Um, we're going to see her later on with the spacer background. There is a side quest that involves Shepard's mom. Uh, well, you get to hear her, I guess, but not so much see her. Um, look, I love every single one of these. Honestly, like, again, I've played Mass Effect 13 times the entire trilogy. You know I've done every single class. Um, I'll just go through this really quickly. My personal favorite class is actually Vanguard because of the charge ability in 2 and 3. Um, I think that probably the overall most effective at higher difficulty levels is um, Adept, only because it gives you the most ability to crowd control, and if you bring tanky companions, you're going to be totally fine. You're not as you're not as tanky yourself as an Adept, but it's going to be fine because you're going to have so many powers you can crowd control, and you're going to let Rex and whoever take the bullets. Um, Engineer might be the most fun for Mass Effect 1 if you bring Tally with you all the time. If you bring Tally with you all the time and you're an engineer, you just hack everything and it's hilarious because the Geth are basically helpless. Um, in that same vein, Infiltrator is like, you know, that's your tech um, soldier combo. And so sniper build, cloaking, all that kind of stuff. It's very, very good. Um, soldier is fine. If you're not familiar with Mass Effect, Soldier might actually be the best thing to do an Insanity run with just because it's simple, it's straightforward. Get good guns, level up your fitness, and you'll be able to take some bullets. Sentinel, like, it's got to go at the bottom. Don't get me wrong. I like the power armor, especially in the later two games, but Sentinel's going to be ranked last for me. Just real quick, those are my rankings on on classes. I'm going for Confirm a depth on this run. facial identification. I am going to use the default Femshep, the new default iconic Femshep. Uh, <laughs> the taste pops out with the Vanguard comment. <laughs> Uh, Jane Shepard in the chat. Uh, Infiltrator is pretty boring in ME1, but amps up in ME2. I agree, but I also hope it's going to be better in ME1 now because of Legendary. So I'm going to go with the default appearance, but real quick, I want to show you guys some of the stuff about Character Creator. I mean, right away, you see the textures, the models are so much better for female Shepard. Um, like, honestly, it's just, they're so much better. Like, you just look at this, you look at, like, the quality of the hair, like, the textures... The eye, the models for the eyes, the textures for the eyes are so much better. Like, it's insane how much improved it is, honestly. Like, I can't, I cannot say enough about how improved this is, honestly. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do custom, but just let me show you some of the... I mean, some of these are just redone old hairstyles. Like this one's, of course, from the original, but it's just redone, higher texture. Some of them are just kind of slightly touched up, or like they're like Mass Effect 2 or Mass Effect 3 hairs. They're now in Mass Effect 1, and some of them are just new. Um, like this is one of the new ones, and so you see some of these new hairstyles just look really good. That's actually pretty cool. It's got the little shaved pattern to the side.
Uh, so yeah, I mean, they, again, they just have a lot of different new options here. I want to say a lot of these scars. I mean, maybe some of these scars are new. Either way, I appreciate it. I appreciate, you know, giving the character creator an overhaul. I still don't feel like this character creator is going to be anything incredible. I will try making a custom character at Confirm some point. Facial but again, for now, I want to see how this how this face looks with animations and everything. Profile reconstruction complete. Okay. Uh, Jane Shepard, spacer, war hero, adept, and uh, yeah, let's do it. Identification confirmed. Insanity, auto level up off, classic scaling mode, defensive squad usage, subtitles on, auto save on, tutorials, what the heck, may as well put it on. Let's go! And again, I'm shutting up during the cutscenes. Well, what about Shepard? She's a spacer, lived aboard starships most of her life. Military service runs in the family. Both her parents were in the Navy. She proved herself during the Blitz. Held off enemy forces on the ground until reinforcements arrived. She's the only reason Elysium is still standing. We can't question her courage. The Humanity needs a hero. Reflection in the and window. Shepard's the best we've got. Holy shit. <laughs> I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient space-faring civilization. In the decades that followed, the mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history. Civilizations of the galaxy call it. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Oh, man. I can't believe the reflections on the window, honestly. The Arcturus Prime relay is in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander? Oh, hey, Katie. Wow, I didn't even see Katie jump in. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. <laughs> the relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. It looks so phenomenal. I like. I did honestly. Station guys. secure for transit. All right here it comes. This is it. This is the. Uh, this is the iconic shot. The one and only Commander Shepard. Everybody. The board is green. Approach run has begun. Thrusters, check. check. Navigation, Navigation, check. Check. Internal, Internal mission sync, sync engaged. Systems online. All systems online. Drift, Drift. just under 1500k, my 1500K. man, Joker! 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. <sighs> I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment, so you I hate, hate that guy. I love the dialogue. I can Nihilus do it by memory. Sorry, I shouldn't step on the cutscenes, but so I can do it by memory. I mean, that's that's the whole thing about watching your favorite movie, Remember right? It's like talking during it. Remember the on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across, across the, the galaxy and hit a target, target the size of a pinhead. pinhead. So, so that's, that's incredible. incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. Only an idiot believes the official story. <laughs> Katie says, low-key making me jealous there isn't a DA remaster. I mean, on some level, yes. Because if, if they did this exact treatment for Origins, I would be there so fast. And let's be honest, so would everybody else. Uh, let's see. I agree. You're overreacting. So let's talk a little bit while we're on this screen about Shepard and how we're going to play this Shepard. Somebody asked, you know, a little bit of description of how I'm going to be playing Shepard. Here's, here's my basic idea for the role play, because I do think that Mass Effect 1 especially gives you a greater, de a greater deal of latitude as far as how you role play, mainly with this middle option. I really lament the fact that in 2 and 3, 
there isn't that neutral option quite as much. So that's kind of what I'm going to lean into for Mass Effect 1. It's going to be a little bit pro-human at the start, not like crazy terra firma party pro-human, but realistically, Shepard is a little bit, she's a little bit skeptical of aliens. You know, she's a student of history. She recognizes what happened during the First Contact War. A little bit wary of Turians especially. And then over time, as she builds the relationship with her crew, she's going to become a little more pro-galactic community. Um, and so it's going to it's going to be very Paragon-ish with the occasional renegade option. She's a, she's a good soldier, loves the Alliance, likes to take the, the appropriate um, law-abiding role uh but also she's she's she just shouldn't take any shit so um so yeah um we're gonna go with the middle option here you always expect the worst well bad feelings are an occupational hazard but we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason so what are we doing here joker status report just cleared the mass relay captain stealth systems engaged everything looks solid good find a comm buoy and link us into the network I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Ethan Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet <laughs> me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Katie wants aliens. Oh, also, Bosog says, and kiss hot aliens. I got I got bad news for you guys. This is going to be a romanceless Shepard. She is dedicated to the mission. I think I've only done no romance Shepard like once before. And I gotta be honest, I kind of like it. She's so professional, like that's that that's her angle. There's there's gonna be prob at least at this point, maybe. Look, once I see Liara, things might change. Okay, no promises. All right, once I see Liara, might change my mind. Uh, but at least now the plan is no romance. Sad face, I know. I'm on my way. <laughs> is it me or does the captain always sound a little pissed off? Only, Only when, when he's, he's talking, talking to you, you Joker. Joker. Oh my goodness. And by the way, Jen Hale's voice, it's just it oh, it's just so good. It's so good. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. I am loving this already. This is absolute amazement. And of course, we have something that we've never had before, which is goddamn photo mode. Are you kidding me? Like, what the heck? Dude, get the heck out of here. You know we're going to do this right away, right? I mean, we kind of have to. We got we to gotta play around with photo mode just a bit. Now, give me that tight angle. Give me that 70 millimeter. You already know what it is, but get the N7 emblem in the shot. Very nice. Offset a little bit. The Normandy right in the background. Come on. Come on. A little bit of a tighter f-stop in there just make sure the face is in focus the music nostalgia 100% agree 100% agree boo in the chat says kiss tally's face mask please uh here we go saturation i'll put that up just a tad really i just want some more brightness and then also pump up that contrast a little bit Film grain off. That's absolutely magnificent. I, I um, I'm, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm telling you, I just saw him. He marched by like he was on a mission. Oh, also, we walk so everywhere. If you're new here, I don't know what else to tell you. You can yell at me in the chat if you think it's weird. We we believe in the role play. Shepard does not jog all over the ship for no reason. Ask a regular if you're not sure. We walk everywhere in my RPGs. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect, ma'am, maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Even the updates to Presley look good. He looks younger, too. 
Looks like the looks like the remaster gave him some anti-aging. Uh, let's see here. What about the Spectre? You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Mm -hmm. Sarah Hutchinson in the chat. Glad I'm not the only walker. You certainly are not. Nihilus is no ordinary Turian. You've got that right, Commander. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, ma'am. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. Also in the chat, let me know what do you guys normally think? Are you more... Uh, more kind of pro-human? Do you feel like from a lore, when you do your role plays, are you fully trusting of aliens right away, or are you a little more on the suspicious side? Because you gotta be honest, sometimes it's a little suspicious, you know what I mean? Can you really trust a hand or a big giant jellyfish? What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors, cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Strong song, diplomatically trying to be neutral. Okay, you know what? That is that is a very good way to go. Patrick says, trusting of aliens. Uh, Fish Paste says, I'm fully trusting because I want to date them. Well, I mean, if that's your strategy, yeah, that, that, that might be... Uh, I can see why you went that route. Uh, Bo Suck says, Nihilus got that kissable face, got to trust. Uh, there's a lot of people talking about kissing the aliens. A lot of people talking about kissing the aliens. A lot of trusting as well. I can see a lot of people saying definitely trusting of the aliens. Katie, I mean, I like the space jellies. It's the little <laughs> moment I'm not a fan of. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're done with Presley. I better head down and see the captain. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we are just gonna peacefully walk over here. And by the way, I wish I wish I could say this is truly my first moment reaction, but goddamn, when I saw Chakwas, I was like, "Holy shit, fucking Chakwas!" Not. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Uh, Kawat? K what? Um, is this a full-on read-everything run or skip run uh, new here? First of all, welcome. Thank you for being here. It's going to be pretty completionist. I'm not going to promise 100% completionist, but, you know, I love Mass Effect, and I, and I want to give people who are maybe watching for the first time or just kind of dabbling in Mass Effect, want to give them that full experience. So I'm not saying I'm going to read every single codex entry out loud, but it's definitely going to be um, very thorough. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself in the Blitz. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. I'm glad I'm not the only one who's taken, about, taken aback by Chakwas. Normally I have a strict no simping policy, but if some of y'all want to simp for Chalk West, I'm not even going to put you in jail today. That's how good of a mood I'm in. That's how, honestly, that's how good of a mood I'm in. I'm not even putting people in jail right now, if it has to do with Chalk West. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, ma'am. I'm not going to screw this up. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. 
It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even paradise gets boring after a while. <laughs> there is no kissing Chakwas, okay? Oh, man. I give you—I cracked the door open just an inch. You guys are just ready to bust through. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Mandy in the chat says, Jenkins reminds me of Sandal. And now I'm never going to be able to not see that. Thanks, Mandy, because that is that is an oddly accurate... I don't know if anyone else has ever said that before. That's the first time I've heard it, but goddamn, is it true? Uh, let's see here. We got a Spectre on board. Um, yeah, what, what about the Spectres? What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the Council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those CSEC grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Oh, that's good. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. <clears throat> Just look at like the brushed metal on the wall. Like it always had this same stylistic look, but it just looks so much better now in higher resolution, higher detail. Honestly, like I've always loved the Normandy as a ship, but this is just, it just so much better. That's all I can really say. Okay. I'm gonna save here. Uh, and yeah, so basically what we're doing, do we have points to spend? I do. Just immediately it's going into charm, and I'll, I'll let you guys know also, for role-playing purposes, I like to take either charm or intimidate. Practically speaking, you should only worry about updating one of these, because you're only going to need one, basically, right? So pick one if you want to be more Paragon or more Renegade, because I'm going to actually go for a somewhat neutral playthrough. I'm actually going to try and max out both of them, just because I like the option of hearing Shepard say either line of dialogue. That is not actually a smart strategy for leveling up. I am only doing that because I am a dork for roleplay. And if you're if you're really worried about maximizing your combat ability, spend those points somewhere else. Um, I have a video on the Exalted March channel um, about top six video, you know, six quick tips about how to come back into Mass Effect, etc. But anyway, not not the best like combat strategy to spend points in both of these trees. But again, from the story roleplay standpoint, that's just kind of what I like to do at this point, even though it's not necessary. Uh, Kath, there's a part of me that feels like nothing has changed, and then a part of me that is shaken by how different this looks. You're 100% right. I mean, it is a remaster, it's not a remake, but Commander the Shepherd, new look I really gives it a different first. feel at times. Give us a chance to talk. What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? 
I think it's about time we told the commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. So Paul Baker and Tenku uh, in the chat are both raising some interesting points, and I actually kind of agree with you both. Paul says the shadows are way less stark. Um, Tenku says the lighting changes are awful. It looks like The Sims 4. I think that's a little bit hyperbolic, but I get what you mean. And it is true that the original Mass Effect 1 especially had very stark shadows. It was very contrasty. This scene in the original Mass Effect, it's completely dark in the background. And I don't actually think that that was a bad thing. I'd like to see what maybe some lighting mods or what the community might do to kind of get some of that starker, more contrasty color palette back. Um, because I do think that it had a more film-like um, sort of shadow balance. You know, the mid-tones especially were very crushed down um, and, and the highlights were punchy, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was a very contrasty look and it felt like, it honestly felt like not bad film color correction. This definitely looks more like a video game, which to some people having that additional clarity, being able to see what's in the background is going to be good for them. But I do agree that we have lost something stylistically a little bit. Is someone going to fill me in, Captain? We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. What else can you tell me? This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Uh, Lissy says, I like this lighting way more than the heavy, heavy shadows, uh, but I think the best lighting would be somewhere between the two. Uh, yeah, Paul, also, you're saying you appreciate what they're doing with the realism. I mean, I kind of agree with, with what you guys are saying, honestly. I appreciate how it looks now. I do think the overall visual package is better because of the higher polygon models, higher resolution textures, etc., etc. And I do think that the lighting, the way that the lighting is reflecting off of stuff, the fact that we have ambient occlusion actually in this version of the game, Overall, it looks way better from a technical standpoint, from a realism standpoint. I'm just saying, like some of you are, that stylistically, I wouldn't mind some of those darker shadows coming back partially. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you sound worried. Are we expecting trouble? I'm always expecting trouble. There's more, Shepard. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. You held off an enemy assault during the Blitz single-handed. You showed not only courage, but also incredible skill. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Xer, what's up? No, you haven't missed much. I mean, we're right about to drop down into Eden Prime. Um, I'm hyped. I'm glad Mass Effect is back. I'm glad. I'm glad so many of you are here. It looks like, as I'm looking at, you know, the YouTube stats, we've got, you know, probably a bunch of people who maybe are not regulars. So, also, just want to say welcome. You know, if you've never stopped by before, you're just kind of browsing YouTube, seeing who's streaming live, and you stopped in. Thank you for being here. We love Mass Effect, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep jumping into it here. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. 
Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Hey, hey, Sherry in the chat, been a viewer of Split the Veil for a bit. Love your content. Well, thank you for the support. Really, uh, really appreciate it, um, everyone who's stopping in today. It is Mass Effect Day. It's a day to be hyped, so... Uh, okay, let's talk about the beacon. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology. Even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. Hey, Bill. Uh, no, no shame in not having played Mass Effect yet. That's why we can kind of do... Uh, we can do this and... Uh give people a uh, look into it give people some insight lady asks thor i feel like this is what people want in their remaster so it's good i agree i agree i think if they had gone further in making stylistic changes it could have been bad i think they went right up to that edge to give it the refresh that it needed the attican traverse is under citadel protection if the terminus systems attack it's an act of war technically yes but some of the species in the terminus might be willing to start a war over this the last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. Uh, people are asking about hands and stuff. Um, hands and ears, to me, still don't look too good. And Anderson looks really good from some angles, and then from other angles, just the, the updated texture on his skin looks like it just doesn't have... I, I don't know what uh, the, uh, the appropriate graphical terminology is, but it looks like it just doesn't have enough texture to it. Um, let's see here. I'm not always going to exhaust every single dialogue option, but I do like some of these options because, like, when they're talking about the Attican Traverse or they're talking about the Terminus systems, there's a lot of franchises that will have sort of color or, like, flavor text to make the world seem like it's big and fleshed out, and then they'll never touch that again. Whereas in Mass Effect, they are consistent for all three games as far as what, what the Attican Traverse and what the Terminus systems are, and it actually has implications um, more so in 2 as well with Omega and stuff like that. So I just love that kind of consistency in the world building. Same thing with Dragon Age. So if you're a Bioware fan, you already know, but it's just worth calling out how good it is. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden Prime. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need... Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold it yeah, for the 8.5. Yeah, Mr. Blue, you're 100% right. The mandible twitch on Nihilus was just coming up. Oh, it's so good. It's so good, the subtlety of that. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This, this just mission got more just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Yeah, just wait till you see Sovereign in uh, down on Eden Prime. It it it's look. I, I miss the red sky. I do, but also Eden Prime looks amazing. So somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? 
Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Ready and able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! I always take the helmets off in the original two. game, but the helmets actually look so good in the remaster. Like, I'm gonna be leaving them on when they're in combat, just for the immersion. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. God, look at this. At the Normandy, how good it looks. Just look at this environment. I mean, if this is your first time this seeing it... Hit hard, Commander. God, I, I just hope the quality of the stream is coming through as good as I want it to, because it looks absolutely fantastic. I am absolutely loving it. We're going to map throw. And, yeah. All right, let's... Uh, Got some points for Caden, and so what we want to do for Caden is we definitely want barrier, and then we want to get decryption high enough that we can unlock electronics because electronics is going to give him more shields with every point. We're not going to worry about Jenkins because, well, you'll find out if you don't already know. What the hell are those? Gas bags. Gas bags. Don't worry, they're harmless. And uh, yeah, it just looks goddamn brilliant, honestly. Oh god, what happened here? Let's see, what does Caden have? Caden should be on a pistol, good. Oh, and of course, the great thing is now too, right? Like, there is no class weapon restriction, so while I am very accustomed to using a pistol with with Adepts, it's uh, just go right to my Lancer, which is really quite good. But I am going to probably stick a little bit with pistol, because because I like pistols, honestly. Do the water. Like, look at these little puddles of water here and the reflection. Look at the way the light bounces off the wall. Look at that. I mean, I understand it's still not like a 2021 game would look, but considering this game came out in 2007 and all, they could have done the cheap, easy version of this and just slap a new coat of paint. I think this is definitely more than a new coat of paint. Receives a proper service once the mission is complete, but I need you to stay focused. Aye, aye, man. Yeah, big time. Eps in the chat for for Jenkins, man. He's 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 the red shirt of Mass Effect, so you know, gotta show some respect here. <laughs> Heal up, Caden, a little bit. It is so weird because I'm so accustomed to the timing, even of the enemies coming in, that I, I'm always like, oh, how come the enemies aren't attacking yet? Because they actually change a little bit. Or they don't. This mob of enemies doesn't show up until a little bit later. Oh, dang. Gas bag. <laughs> Crossfire casualty. Buildings here, Shepard. A lot of bodies. I'm gonna check it out. I'll try to catch up with you at the dig site. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, the combat feels so much better. Honestly, I mean, it, it really, really does. Is it exactly like, say, Mass Effect 2 or 3? No, because I still think the cover is a little bit unintuitive with that auto cover. 
Um, it's even unintuitive in Andromeda. I don't even like the auto cover in Andromeda. I like having the dedicated button. <clears throat> but it's definitely, it's close enough that I think that they've officially succeeded in unifying uh, the experience completely. Again, this is not the efficient way to handle combat. For roleplay purposes, I'm just going to max out Charm and Intimidate. And for Caden, we're trying to get electronics open as fast as possible, pretty much. <laughs> Katie says F for toot balloon. Uh, okay, here we go. This is this is magical. Oh, this is so good. Ashley's armor looks so good. Here. Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. You the one in charge here, ma'am? Are you wounded, Williams? A few scrapes and burns. Nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, but we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. This isn't your fault, Williams. You couldn't have done anything to save them. Yes, ma'am. We held our position as long as we could, until the Geth overwhelmed us. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Why are they here now? They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It might still be there. You're coming with us, Williams. We need that beacon. Aye, aye, ma'am. It's time for payback. What else do you know about the Geth? Just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Well, after that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Veil. Nobody's really heard much from them since. All it plays, it says, uh, Ashley looking fine. Well, first of all, welcome. Second of all, you're not wrong. Uh, okay. Describe what happened leading up to the attack. We were sent out a couple of nights ago from the main colony to secure the area. It seemed like a routine patrol until the Geth hit us. We never knew they were coming. H.C. Rodriguez says, okay, you've convinced me. I definitely need to play this game. I completely agree. Whether you're playing it again because you never played Mass Effect or especially if you've never played Mass Effect, now is the perfect time with the, with the update. What happened to the researchers at the dig site? I don't know. They set up camp near the beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their <laughs> unit fared better than mine. says, Ashley, better than Caden. Um, <laughs> I actually have a hard time choosing between them because I like them both, even though a lot of people dislike them both for different reasons. I mean, what do we what do we say in the chat, Caden or Ashley? Who, who do we like more? Tell me everything you know about the beacon. They were doing some digging out here to extend the monorail and expand the colony. A few weeks ago, they unearthed some Prothean ruins and the beacon. Suddenly, every scientific expert in the colony was interested. That's when they brought us in to secure the site. I don't know much about the beacon itself. But I heard one of the researchers say this could be the biggest scientific discovery of the century. Have you seen a Turian specter around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a specter anyway. If you saw this guy, you'd know. Carries enough firepower to wipe out a whole platoon. Luckily, he's on our side. Sorry. Like I said, no Turians. 
Ooh, we're getting we're getting the battle going on here. I saw a couple Ashleys showing up early, but now I see I see Caden coming in here. Amy Dave says they both suck. <laughs> uh, Sarah Hutchinson says Caden, he's the dad of the friend group. In a way, he is. Yeah, yeah. The Gek Ashley, 110 <laughs> percent. Katie says riot for Ashley. Look, I like Ashley a lot. I think I think that well, we'll get to know her. We'll get to see it for ourselves. Move up. She has a very grounded backstory. She feels like a person who could actually be just a regular old Alliance Marine. You know, she has a family history that's relatable. Um, she has a very grounded story, I would say. Uh, we are going to be picking up kind of everything that we can get our hands on as far as um, upgrades and equipment. However, I am probably not going to change Shepard out of the Onyx armor unless it's unless it's a higher tier Onyx armor because uh, I like the fact that it, the other armors aren't going to have the N7 emblem, and to me that's kind of like the whole point. So, um, and kind of, I mean, I mean, we could switch out Cadence to be honest, um, because I don't Cadence is just like the generic one. But in any event, let's do this real quick. Level up Ash. quick and for Ashley we're trying to get to fitness and of course well combat armor we already have uh, but we need to upgrade assault training until we can get fitness I'm gonna put a up oh, well yeah I got a couple points into combat armor so she can get shield boots unlocked soldier is also gonna be very important for her Uh, I gotta tell you, one of my favorite things about the entire Mass Effect trilogy is the voiced codex, to be honest. Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. I mean, it would be too boring to just sit to here and all of these, but believe me, to a certain extent, that's what I was doing last night. They are military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. It's such a great phenomenal voice, honestly. Dig site, investigate. This is the dig site. The beacon was right here. It must have been moved. By who? Our side or the Geth? Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. You think anyone got out of here alive? If they were lucky. Maybe hiding up in the camp. It's just on the top of this ridge, up the ramps. Change of plans, Shepard. There's a small spaceport up ahead. I want to check it out. I'll wait for you there. Octafluoride says, well, DA is lucky enough to have Gil uh, reading Codex for us. I, I actually love the fact that that's being done. There's a part of me that wants to read through all of the unvoiced um, entries uh, for Mass Effect, which, you know, I'm not promising that, but it's like way, way, way on my list. Something to do. Can we level up again? Yeah, when you have the classic leveling, you just level up like crazy, pretty much. Um... I will take Barrier, since I can't take any more Charm and Intimidate. As much as I do want more recharge time, actually... I am going to... A little... No, I'm really going to need my Barrier, aren't I? Your Barrier. Uh, yep. Sabotage, and now got overload and we've got the electronics tree started for Caden and we'll continue to do combat armor while training for Ash uh, 
Uh, someone, I just missed it in the chat, someone was asking about ultra-wide resolutions. Yes. I'm just playing in 1440p, but yes, the game does support ultra-wide. Looks like they hit the camp hard. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. Uh, did they make it possible to turn off the UI sound with anyone? I don't believe so. What did the Geth do to them? Okay, how many grenades do we have? We have four grenades. Okay, we don't need grenades right now. This one's coming through first. Let's just do an overload here. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna act the second part. We need to push. Okay, uh, we should have how many? I would love for Caden to be able to get both of them with Roe, but it's probably not going to happen. Nope, sure didn't. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, okay. Dabo him. Warp. Okay, I need you guys to go there, and now... That one. Ooh, okay. Not a scratch on us. Very good. Husks look so good. I completely agree. Mother nothingness in the chat. Husks look so good. Yeah, I, I completely agree. That door. It's closed. Security locks engaged. I love the fact that they replaced the minigame also. Oh, wait, hold on, wait a second. This was different on PlayStation. Oh, what the heck? They made it harder too. So they've got the old school one on PC. Very interesting. Humans, thank the maker. Hurry, close the door. Dr. Warren, see, this back. is the moment where I, when I saw Dr. Warren and Manuel, I was like, Holy crap, this looks so good. Like, I expected Shepard to look good. I expected the main companions to look good. I never expected, like, regular NPCs to have this much of an upgrade. Don't worry. We'll protect you. Thank you. I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, only ruin and corpses will remain. Ah, uh, someone says you had the old school mini game on Xbox as well. Good to know. Interesting. I guess Sony went a different way. Katie was asking if they had unvoiced entries in ME. Yeah, they sure did. I'll, I'll, I'll show some of them here in a second. Uh, what's up, what's up with your boy here? What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit unstable. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No, I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. Red Slice in the chat says, can't wait to see how Rex looks. I completely agree. I always thought Rex looked incredible in the original, even vanilla, especially with mods on PC. I think Rex always looked incredible, so I can't wait to see how he compares in this. What else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment. The next we were hiding in the shed while the Geth swarmed over the camp. Agents of the Destroyers, bringers of darkness. Heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside. Gunfire, screams. I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Uh, hello, Jordan, the king of Mass Effect. I don't know about king, but thank you for the vote of confidence. I'll take, I'll take the, uh, the, I shall serve as number one fan if that's a position. Uh, beacon. Can you tell me anything about the beacon? It's some type of data module from a galaxy-wide communications network. Remarkably well-preserved. It could be the greatest scientific discovery of our lifetime. Miraculous new technologies, groundbreaking medical advances. Who knows what secrets are locked inside? We have unearthed the heart of evil. Awaken the beast. 
unleashed the darkness. Manuel, please, this isn't the time. Sophie in the chat says Mari from Geek Remix has a video on how DA might be in the M and the Mass Effect Galaxy. Uh, there's a Krogan head mounted in the Winter Palace. There is, but there's also more than that too. In one of the DLCs for Mass Effect 2, there is a statue of an ogre, of a dark spawn. Uh, so there, there's, I mean, at this point we think that those are mainly Easter eggs, but there's nothing to disprove the idea that it might actually be sort of canon in universe. But it certainly doesn't have any um, core implications for either plot, really. Did you notice a Turian in the area? I saw him, the prophet, leader of the enemy. He was here before the attack. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He couldn't have been here. I I'm sorry, Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. Uh, Tom Kish waits till the PlayStation version is again. I don't know what you mean by that exactly, but the PlayStation version is fantastic. I played it last night. PlayStation 5 version is phenomenal. Flukas, what's up, man? Uh, do you think the uh, Mass Effect Tappy ending and other great mods will be updated for this game? I certainly hope so. And according to what Mac Walters, the, the series director, was saying in an interview recently, he doesn't think that, it, you know, they didn't do anything to go out of their way to stop those mods. In fact, they actually looked at some of the graphic mods that the fans had done for the originals and kind of used that as an idea of what they wanted to surpass. So it seems like there's, you know, they have a they have a a appreciation for the mods. So I don't think they were going out of the way to stop mods. Williams, take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, Manuel. Go lie down. You'll feel better once the medication kicks in. Oh, nice. Okay. We got a heavy armor for human, and we've got some Krogan armor, which will stay for Rex. I think Ashley needs to level up a little bit more before she can do heavy if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she can't wear this just yet. Nope, I almost missed a box. Okay, we're gonna make a quick save here because we've got the cutscene and then a little quick little battle coming up here. Oh, and we will now get to see Saren for the first time. Saren? This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. I will just highly recommend you guys, um, take a look at what's about to happen because it looks absolutely phenomenal. This is, what is that? so oh, much more is... than what I expect. Like, honestly, like... Look at the size of it. <laughs> it looks so good. It looks so good. I can't explain to you how, how satisfied I am with this. Like, I miss the red sky. I do. But that scale difference and how much closer it looks and, like, the size of the ship, it's really, really good. Uh, yeah, the husks are kind of uh, confused. 
sneaked, aren't they? They're not really too good at running at us. I mean, that's pretty much the way it was in the original also, but... They can't, the, the husks seem to be having a hard time with pathing at this point. Really, like oddly tanky. Just because it's not a vanity and a pistol. Die already. Let's do a little barrier and get up close to personal ash. Kill him with it. There you go. Okay, so yeah, this is a nice little uh, nice little walk through here for what insanity is going to be like. Not too hard, but also, you know, even the husks are putting up a fight. God, I don't... I never really like this minigame, to be honest. <laughs> okay, there we go. Everybody stay calm out there. We're coming out. We're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? You're okay now. Nobody's going to hurt you. Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Ah, uh, I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over. It showed up right before the attack. Knew it was trouble the second I saw it. So we made a break for the sheds. Uh, okay. Attack details. Tell me everything you remember about the attack. The three of us were working the crops when that ship showed up. We just saw it and ran. I don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. They were by the garage, over near the spaceport, right where that ship came down. No way they survived. You don't know that. We survived. If they made it to the garage, they could have had a fighting chance. Flukas says the sound that Sovereign makes when it takes off so much richer. I completely agree. I, that is one thing that I think has been really understated thus far, is sound design. The weapons sound better, the effects sound better, and I think that that adds a lot to the experience. Lady Astor says you make insanity play look easy. Well, thank you very much. I've had a little bit of experience. What else can you tell me about the ship you saw? I was too busy running to get a clear look at it. I think it landed over near the spaceport. Tell them about the noise, Cole. That awful noise. It was emitting some kind of signal as it descended. It sounded like the shriek of the damned. Only it was coming from inside your own head. Derek says those clothes textures look great. You are 100% correct. In the original, that, that buckle or that, I'm sorry, the satchel or whatever it is that's uh, around his bandolier, whatever you want to call it, that's around his chest, it looks completely flat with the shirt. Now it actually has some, some depth to it, so. It was probably trying to block communications. Whatever it was, it felt like it was tearing right through my skull. Almost made it impossible to think. Here, Ablasan says, Jordan, I assume you're using the default Fem Shep ME3 face, and you know I like it. It's fantastic that it's added to this. I was never a huge fan of it, honestly, in ME3, but I just love that it's here now consistent across all three games snail cast i wonder if a lot will transfer to the legendary edition i think that that i mean i haven't heard anything specific but i believe that that team would probably want to aim for that be pretty sure do you know anything about the prothean beacon they dug up we're just farmers we heard they found something out there but it never really mattered to us Not until now Uh, Mr. Blue MD also never noticed this version that he has a scar on his face near his nose. Yeah, all these little details now come through. I have to go. Hey, Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. Jeez, Blake, you gotta learn when to shut up. You have something to tell me, Cole? Some guys at the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. In exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. What kind of packages? I found a pistol. Figured it would come in handy if those things came back. But you'll probably get more use out of it than we will. We're risking our lives to save this colony. You sure there's nothing else in here that could help us out? Yeah, there's one more thing. I was gonna sell it after this was over, but you probably deserve it more than I do. Who's your contact at the spaceport, Cole? What's his name? He's not a bad guy. I don't want to get him in trouble. Besides, I'm not a snitch. He might have something to do with this whole attack, Cole. We need his name. It's important. 
God, the facial animations yeah, okay, are just slightly right. better, but sometimes Howard. that's all it takes to just be slightly still better. Alive. You go, Alonzo. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for, for coming in. Really, thank everybody for being here. It's honestly really cool to see people excited and wanting to see stuff around Mass Effect. So for those of you that are here all the time, I mean, you know, I've been hyped for this for a while now. Anyone who's coming in for the first time, um, huge Mass Effect fan, played through the trilogy more than a dozen times, and it's just so great to see it with this much more detail. I have to go. Good luck. Uh, okay, yes, and that Stinger pistol is actually, that is actually a very good pistol to have early on. Especially if you're using pistol, like that is a nice upgrade to have. Uh, let's see, do I have weapons force? I don't too much care about weapons force, honestly. I will put that combat sensor on. Uh, now for Ash, do we have a better sniper rifle? Not exactly. More damage, half the heat sink, and slightly less accurate. Now what the heck, for right now we'll do it. Good hammerhead. Uh, let's just like stick with bar. Oh yeah, secondary. Um, I mean, this is basically your secondary profile if anyone hasn't seen, other than the voice codex. It's kind of got like more detailed stuff about, you know, what the upgrades are, starship sensors or something. Like this this lore really gets deep into the science fiction. And a lot of people never pay any attention to this stuff, which is totally fine. You can just enjoy the main story and that's totally okay. But if you're a big science fiction nerd, this stuff in the Mass Effect universe is very, very well fleshed out. All right, let's get back into it. Make a quick. save Paula Play says uh, you're so chill man a pleasure to watch you play well thank you very much it's a pleasure to have everyone here commander it's Nihilus oh poor Nihilus something's moving over behind those crates wait don't don't shoot I'm one of you I'm human what are you doing sneaking around back there I'm sorry, I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Powell. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. Uh, Mr. Blue, you are correct. Menu looks slightly different compared to the console version. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, it actually throws me off a little bit. I kind of like the one on PlayStation more. Uh, was it the other one shot him? The other one? What the hell are you talking about? There were two Turians here. Your friend and another one he called Saren. I think they knew each other. Your friends seem to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. Uh, Flukas says it's nice to have a new Bioware release. It's been a long time since anything DA and MEA uh, was a long time ago. Now, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I completely agree. I mean, this really, I know it's just a re-release. I know it's a remaster. I know it's not a new game. All of that being said, I still think this is huge for Mass Effect. It gets it back into the public eye. I mean, if you look at the Twitch numbers, if you look at what I'm sure other, you know, people way bigger than me are streaming right now on YouTube, it's getting back into the mainstream, um, which is going to show EA that this is still a franchise that they need to be investing in. They are working on the next new Mass Effect game right now. You know, what is EA going to commit to that game as far as marketing, as far as more resources, you know, everything that that game needs to be successful. This is going to show EA as a publisher there's still a lot of interest in Mass Effect. We were told a Prothean beacon was brought to the spaceport. What happened to it? It's over on the other platform, probably where that guy Saren was headed. He hopped on the cargo train right after he killed your friend. I knew that beacon was trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. Uh, Lord Dagon in the chat says, are you going Paragon or Renegade? Ah, uh, it's going to be a little more Paragade. So it's going to be kind of like neutral with a slight lean towards Paragon. How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I, I, I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I 
I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? If you hadn't snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. You're Cole's contact here on the docks for the smuggling ring. What? No! I mean, what does it matter now? So I'm a smuggler, who cares? My supervisor's dead, the entire crew's dead. Doesn't matter now, does it? Yeah, okay, so Demon King, uh, the chat says biggest issue with ME1 lore was the alien companions feel like info dumps. I completely agree with you, but I really do feel like that was a conscious decision that they made for the sake of casual players. I've actually just reread Mass Effect Revelation again, which was the prequel novel that was written by Drew Karpishan, who is the lead writer of Mass Effect 1. And when he introduces aliens, he does not, in that novel, he does not do the thing that you see in so many games where they're just a, like a prototypical version of their species. You know, the first Batarian that you meet in Revelation is like this very rich, influential, um, sort of aristocrat criminal, whereas Batarians are mainly just treated as like cannon fodder mercenaries in the series. You know, the first Volus that you meet, um, although they are a bartender, they're not just like a shrewd economic type of you know information broker or something like that they're a very empathic person who actually understands and cares about human culture when they're talking to captain anderson um the first krogan that you see in that book which is actually a bounty hunter named scar kind of similar to rex is not just like a big dumb krogan who can't think he's very savvy um, he knows how to deal with people who think that they're smarter than he is. So you actually see that the writers of, from Bioware know how to treat the aliens in very nuanced ways. But I think in a video game where you have a lot of casual players, it's a little bit different than in a novel. So I kind of understand why they did it, but I, I agree that, you know, especially in the later games, they, they do a better job of balancing that out. Anything hidden nearby that we could use against the Geth? A shipment of grenades came through last week. Nobody notices if a few small pieces go missing from the military orders. You greedy son of a bitch! We're out here trying to protect your sorry ass, and all you can think about is how you can rip us off? I never thought you'd actually need those grenades. Who'd want to attack Eden Prime? We're just a bunch of farmers. How was I supposed to know? Just give me the grenades. They're yours. Take them. My smuggling days are over, I swear. A lot of Marines died here, Powell. Those grenades could have come in handy. If I were you, I'd think of some way to make it up to them. Yeah, uh, okay. There is something else I was saving. Could be worth a fortune. Experimental technology, top of the line. Take it. I don't need it. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Really, I'm sorry. Uh, Harnassi, I think I'm pronouncing that name right. This looks great. Does it play good as well? It plays fantastic. I, I have played Mass Effect 1 a lot. And I know how cl clunky and janky it can feel, and this feels almost as good as two and three. Not quite, but it's it's definitely a lot more consistent now. Uh, let's see, where was it? Chase? Was it Chase who asked? Yeah. Hey Jordan, any idea how late you'll, you'll be streaming today? I'm gonna be going till at least. Well, I'm gonna be going for at least another half hour, maybe longer. And I gotta be honest with you, if I have time later tonight, I might be back again. Uh, I'm gonna try and stream this a little bit more aggressively just because it's very easy for me to play Mass Effect and talk at the same time because I've played it so many times. So I, I might even be streaming later on today. Follow me on Twitter at the Exalted March. Um, I will always tweet out there when I'm gonna be streaming on this channel. Uh, there was another one. Uh, Really good questions and stuff in the chat, guys. Sometimes I do miss them a little bit, but um, trying to catch up and see anything that I missed. Uh, Mr. Blue, am I going to be playing it for pleasure, sort of not on stream and, and sort of like streaming it as well? Yeah, basically, because um, I also have it now on PlayStation 5, and I, I actually think it might look a slight bit better. Um, I don't know if that's just because I'm playing on 1440p right now versus um, on PlayStation it's at 4k but um, I probably will but I'm probably going to be playing on stream much more than I have in the past or at least I hope so um, I think we kind of got what we need to at homeboy here we need to find that beacon before it's too late take the cargo train that's where the other Turian went I, I, I can't stay here I need to get away from all this 
High explosive, very helpful for our grenades. Also want to make a quick save here. Adam, hi, how are you? I am well, how are you, Adam? <laughs> Welcome. I don't know why I just took out a sniper rifle. I definitely did not want that. Uh, let's do pistol. Uh, Ash, go ahead and move up. Come on, Ash. Ash, 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 go over there. Yeah, one thing I recommend is like, don't be afraid to use your, your henchmen as kind of cannon fodder. Um, I mean, try not to do it with the ones that are squishier, but Ash is going to be a little bit more HP resilient. So, like, don't be afraid to send her down there first. <laughs> uh, you can always use your meta gel if you see her shield starting to break or her health going down or whatever. So, like, I'm, I'm never afraid to just send Ash into harm's way. And then also, like, it gives you a little bit more... Ah, crap. Oh, good job. I do like the rebalancing as well. Like, this Colossus used to rush very quickly. How dare you? Uh, in the original. And they will still rush, but it's not going to do it. Like, it's, still, it's not so spammy. Like, they don't all just rush you immediately. Love not having the weapon restriction by class anymore. That's honestly like to be able to use, to use a sniper rifle just out of the box with the adept class is very satisfying. Let's go ahead. Katsy in the chat, wow, the combat is smooth. You are not wrong. This is the best that Mass Effect 1 has ever felt, combat-wise, and I love it. I love it. I mean, this is, I, I'm not going to say this yet. I want to wait till I actually finish the remastered version of Mass Effect, but I think that Mass Effect has a chance to jump in my Mass Effect rankings. I've always ranked it as Mass Effect 2 as my favorite, of course. Mass Effect 3 under that, even though I know the ending is not everybody's favorite, the overall experience is great. And then I put Mass Effect 1, quote-unquote, last, even though I love Mass Effect 1. With the updates to the combat, I think Mass Effect 1 have to move, might have to move up a little bit, so... Okay, we are leveling up again here, and we are going to continue to do... Oh, basic armor. Yeah, 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 we're going to need basic armor for sure. Want that shield boost, definitely. Okay. Now again, electronics, this is very important. You do get more shields for the for the character you're upgrading per point of electronics. Make sure I take that and continue to do his barrier. Uh, for Ash, we still need to unlock... I don't know, undo that. Uh, we need to unlock fitness. This will add 10% to her health, 14, 17, etc. That's really, really effective for her as a tank. Set the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. Now he 
Demo says ME3, ME1, ME2. Yeah, actually, that's a great question. Let me know how you guys rank it. For those of you who have played the trilogy, what order do you go? Is it ME2 at the top? ME3? Like, how do you... Which, which, what's your order there for, for how you rank the three games? Okay, disarming charges. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Uh, so Hurry! Here's we the need to find to them this. all and shut them down. Take your time doing this. Five minutes is a lot longer time than you think. Do not try to rush this. Um, on, on insanity. On normal, do whatever you want. It's not really going to be a problem. But as you can see there, my shields are were basically gone in two seconds. Um, try and put Kate in this corner because he's going to be the softest, so he's got cover from both angles. You put Ash right here at the end. Um, they are actually positioned sort of unfairly because they will... They come at you from your left flank and head on, which is kind of annoying. And we've also got one that's almost behind us across on the other wall. There's a little bit of pain. I want to try and take down the heavier one quite yet. Quite armor. But you can see that there's one that will move over. Did one get all the way behind us? And they just went all the way across the bridge. Very annoying. Gonna put them both here. And Sabotage. And now. Okay, this now blocks. Uh, give me a throw. Goodbye. Two ME three ME one from Mandy. ME three ME two ME one from Bren. ME two ME three ME one from Sarah Hutchinson. Chase says ME three ME one ME two. I'm gonna come back to these in a second here. Let me let me make sure I actually disarm these bombs that are ticking away. Uh, what was this again? Chase said ME three ME one ME two. Mother nothingness said ME two ME three ME one. Very interesting. Derek Boone, ME3, ME1, ME2. I'm seeing some people with ME3 first, and I really kind of respect you guys who are out here, you know, standing for uh, for ME3. Lorena, ME2, ME1, ME3. I think that's going to be mine from now on. Uh, Smitty, my ranking, ME1, ME3, ME2. That's bold right there. That's bold putting three above two, and it's bold putting one at, at, at the top. But honestly, from the world building and the lore perspective, I don't think you're wrong on ME1. I mean, I think that's actually exactly right. What always held it back was the mechanics of the combat. Now that that's updated, you know, I think MB1's got to be got to be more of a contender there. Uh, more Krogan. Oh, and an Avenger too. Okay. Let's make sure Ash has that. Avenger two. Actually, wait, hold on. What other rifles do we have? Oh no, that's right. Keep it with the Avenger two.
No, we're good. Good. Took a little damage, nothing major. Okay, before we walk over to the beacon, there's a couple of storage crates and lockers and stuff around. I'm not a fan of this. That. Uh, uh, I'm a pickle. ME3, ME2, ME1. Be a legit idiot. ME1, ME3, ME2. Again, that's 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 a bold that's a bold order right there. But I respect everybody who's repping ME1 that hard. Liam, three, two, one. Dumont, one, two, three. Very interesting. Okay, prefer the RPG elements. I don't I don't disagree on that front. Zayad says one, then two, then three. Again, a one, two, three. Very interesting. Paula plays ME1, ME2, ME3. Look, I, I respect it a lot for those of you who are coming out strong for ME1, honestly. Crap. Okay, I gotta get over to this side. And... High caliber barrel and armor piercing rounds. I kind of love that a little bit. In fact, put that on Ash's sniper rifle. High caliber barrel. And what can I do? Do I have any round? Yeah, armor piercing. Shepherd's pistol. Very good. DBG, ME2, ME3, ME1. I feel like that's the classic. I feel like ME2, ME3, ME1 is the most common one that people do. Uh, Lady Astor says, by the way, I really love the plain advice you're giving in the stream as a newcomer. I love learning techniques. I also saw the video uh, advice you posted yesterday. It was really good. Thank you so much for that. That That is really what I was going for, um, especially with the tips video that I did, uh, that I posted yesterday. Um, I had some person saying that it actually made the game seem a little too complex, which, you know, I kind of responded to them and said, hey, look, you don't have to go in with all these, like, techniques. You can always just play it however you want to, especially on normal difficulty, but I'm trying to give that angle for veteran players and newcomers alike um so i'm kind of trying to dip into strategy sparingly believe me i could sit here and deep dive about overlays that you should use when you're fighting rachni all day <laughs> and just go like really into the weeds but we'll maybe hang on to that for a little bit all right here we go Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. So one thing I would change by default, honestly, I would have changed this in Legendary Edition. I would have not had Caden ever do that. I always think it should have been Ashley just based on their character, but instead it switches based on the gender of the character, which I feel like is kind of pointless. This scene looks so much we better. We identified the ship that touched down on Eden Prime. Honestly, it still Normandy, looks dark. It still looks atmospheric, but you can vessel. actually tell that they're it in a ship the where it looked like they were in a black Anderson. void before. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. Look at Venezia's eyes. Like her eyes going wide, and like that is such a great detail. That I was something like that was there in the original, but not with that much detail. Again, the facial expressions are only a little bit better, but they are better, and sometimes it makes a huge difference. Doctor? Dr. Chakwas. I think she's waking up. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? 
How did I end up here? How long was I out? About 15 hours. Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. It's my fault. I must have triggered some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. Honestly, Caden's hair could look a lot better. Like, not, not to be nitpicky on it, but, like, I understand they were trying to go for a little bit more of his gray that's already kind of creeping in early. But it makes him look a little too old, especially for Mass Effect 1. Maybe that is more correct from a lore standpoint, although I don't... I mean, he's still, like, mid-30s at most. And it's also just not a very high-quality texture, to be quite honest, on his hair. You had no way to know what would happen. Actually, we don't even know if that's what set it off. Unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to find out. The beacon exploded. A system overload, maybe. And the blast knocked you cold. Williams and I had to carry you back here to the ship. I appreciate it. Physically, you're fine. But I detected some unusual brain activity. Abnormal beta waves. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Signs typically associated with intense dreaming. I saw... I'm not sure what I saw. The death, destruction... Nothing's really clear. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our EXO holding up, Doctor? Well, all the readings look normal. I'd say the Commander's going to be fine. Glad to hear it. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll be in the mess if you need me. Yeah, hands and ears still still don't look great. Like, the Sounds hands like and the ears for some reason hard, still look there from 2007 almost. Are you sure you're okay? I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Jenkins wasn't your fault. You did a good job, Shepard. Huh, <laughs> Cat C says, gonna go with a bad texture. I was pretty great in my... Mid in my uh, early mid 30s. I'm not at any way knocking it. I'm, I'm already starting to get the gray hairs. I'm, I'm going to be 32 and I, I, I love it. I'm never going to color it. Just let it go gray. But so yeah, that that's not the problem. I like that they're trying to get that sort of starting to gray look in there. I just think the texture needed to be higher quality. Uh, I already said I feel bad about Jenkins. Um, what happened to William? Did we leave Gunnery Chief Williams back on Eden Prime? I figured we could use a soldier like her. She's been reassigned to the Normandy. That's a different line of dialogue. Is that different because it's Femshep? Is that always Femshep's line of dialogue? Because that line of dialogue is Williams is not a part of the Normandy crew. You guys help me out on that. I've played this game a bunch of times as both Femshep and Maleshep, and I'm having trouble remembering if it's always that line for Femshep. Did we leave her behind? Which would be a weird question. Oh, I guess it's because, yeah, it is because of Femship, because Ashley is obviously there, so you wouldn't ask her if that, that is right, that is right. It is always that line for Femship. Williams is a good soldier. She deserves it. Lieutenant Elenko agrees with you. That's why I added her to our That's crew. what it is. If you're a male shepherd, Ashley is in the room with you, so you have to say, oh, she's not a part of our crew. Basically, what is she doing on the Normandy? That's when Captain Anderson says we're trying to transfer her. But if she's not in the room, because, because Caden's in the room, the line becomes... Did we leave her behind? That's right. Uh, yeah, Intel dropped the ball. Intel dropped the ball, sir. We had no idea what we were Everyone's walking Everyone's saying into it's the same there. dialogue. It is, is not. <laughs> it is not. I just played it last night. It is definitely a different line of dialogue. Nobody could have predicted this. You said you needed to see me in private, Captain? I won't lie to you, Shepard. Things look bad. Nihilus is dead. The beacon was destroyed and Geth are invading. The Council's going to want answers. I didn't do anything wrong, Captain. Hopefully the Council can see that. I'll stand behind you and your report, Shepard. You're a damned hero in my books. That's not why I'm here. It's Saren. That other Turian. Saren's a specter. One of the best. A living legend. Yeah, Force but Ghost. If he's working with the Geth, it means he's gone Talking rogue. Talking about how Anderson looks. A rogue specter's trouble. Well, I'll, I'll say it in a second. Saren's here. dangerous, and he hates humans. I want to try not to step on the dialogue in the cutscenes. I'll just say Anderson looks better from some angles than he does. Like, I'm on the fence about Anderson. Sometimes I think he looks better, sometimes not so much. 
I mean, the model is definitely higher quality, but the texture is kind of hit or miss compared to what you can get with modded aspect on PC. Why? He thinks we're growing too fast, taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. But Saren has allied himself with the Geth. I don't know how, I don't know why. I only know it had something to do with that beacon. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of... vision. A vision? A vision of what? I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. The actual body model, I mean, it was the same thing for male Shep, but also for, for Femme Shep. It's like, her shoulders and arms don't look ridiculous anymore. I think the neck and the size of the head is still a little suspect, but the overall, like, shoulders and arms and stuff look way better. What are we going to tell them? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that beacon. Lost Prothean technology? Blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction? Whatever it was. Saren took it. But I know Saren. I know his reputation is politics. He believes humans are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command, and he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. I'll find some way to take him down. It's not that easy. He's a specter. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. That's why we need the Council on our side. Paula Play says Anderson looks better from far away. The zoom in is just too janky. That's actually a really good observation. I do think that they sort of modeled him from the, the view from further back. Also, I just want to say, like, I love Mark Mir and Jennifer Hale. You know, Mark Mir is the voice of male Shepard. Jennifer Hale is the voice of female Shepard. I love them both over the years. I can honestly say I love them both. Hearing Jennifer Hale's voice again as Femme Shep, it's just so good. And I just played this section last night with Male Shep. And again, no knock against Mark Mir. I think he does a great job and very talented. But Jen Hale just adds that little extra. Like, she just adds that little extra to the believability of it. Whether it's, you know, making the line sound just a little more casual and naturalistic. Or putting that extra, you know, little bit of dramatic touch on it. She just, she just has the great Shepard voice overall. We prove Saren's gone rogue, and the Council will revoke his Spectre status. I'll contact the Ambassador, and see if he can get us an audience with the Council. He'll want to see us as soon as we reach the Citadel. We should be getting close. Head up to the bridge and tell Joker to bring us into dock. Okay, we are now officially done with Eden Prime. Just look at the floor! Look at the reflection on the floor! This is genius, man. That's that's honestly phenomenal. Like seeing seeing this gleam on the Normandy, looking at the looking at the texture of the floor and stuff, like it just I mean this is this has always been that feeling that you get when playing Mass Effect of like this is my spaceship, I'm the commander of this crew, etc. Um I mean it just it only gets better, honestly when you add this additional detail to the visuals in the ship, especially. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and I'm glad we didn't lose you, too. Things were pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used to seeing dead civilians. Doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. Now again, Caden does look good from that mid-shot, you know? I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together. And I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. I was there. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, seems like you've been around. Keep it to, uh, the Citadel Council's not gonna be having a... Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got a good grasp of the situation. You a career man? Yeah, a lot of biotics are. We're not restricted, but we sure don't go undocumented. 
may as well get a paycheck for it. Besides, my father served. I made him proud when I enlisted. Eventually. But is that why you're here? Because of your family? Uh, something similar. Yeah, well, that's actually true. I was a regular Navy brat. I got a little more noteworthy than the folks expected. Oh, that's right, the Blitz. I imagine that bought you any post in the fleet. Word is we're heading for the Citadel, ma'am. Can you, uh, tell me why? The Captain hopes the Ambassador can get an audience with the Council. Tell them what Saren's been up to. Makes sense. They'd probably like to know he's not working for them anymore. Whatever happens, we'll be ready, Commander. Honestly, like, the dialogue in Mass Effect 1 is so well written, and I'm not saying that it's not well written in 2 and 3, it really is, but there was something very naturalistic about the way that they structured conversations, you know, talking to Caden, like, what's the first thing you talk about? You talk about the fact that you lost a crew member in Jenkins, you know, and then he very seamlessly makes commentary about the Citadel Council, you get to ask him, you know, hey, it seems like you've been around, you're a savvy professional. He gets to talk about your family. You get an optional dialogue thing, uh, depending on what your background is. If you're a spacer, um, it's all—it's all just very, very well put together. Like it's incredible how well written it is, honestly. Yes, Commander. Is there something you need? How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. Yeah, James Seppard, uh, uh, Caden says the same if you survive a maw attack. He references you the same way, but when he references his family and asks if you're the same, I believe that, that's in, that that is a variable dialogue option based on your background. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenka was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. All right, we're going to come back and talk to Chakwas later. I do kind of feel like I wouldn't just pelt her with a bunch of questions the first time we see her. Like, we'll, we'll walk around the ship and do personal questions later. I should go. <clears throat> Goodbye, Commander. Uh, don't forget, you can get some gear right here. It says Shepard's Locker. Not an actual storage container or anything, but you can just get some extra stuff out of it. Uh, I'll go over here and say hi to Ashley. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. That means a lot from you. I've never met anyone who was awarded the Star of Terra. Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. <clears throat> uh, earlier, it looks like um, Lord Dagon said, serious question, are you going to troll the council and disconnect during reports? Not as a matter of course, but, you know, it just it depends on what mood strikes me at the time, you know? I think you're going to fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. Rack it up here. Uh, let's go ahead and tour the ship a little bit, just for the sake of immersion. And also just getting a look. Like, this is so incredible to me. Like, seeing the, like, frost around the pods. Um, that was there like 99% sure in the original, but just seeing it in greater detail, seeing the reflections off of the pods themselves. Um, God, it looks really good. Uh, I have strong feelings. Is it going to be Garrus or Thane? Uh, I think you're asking about a romance earlier. I said most likely this is going to be a non-romance playthrough. 
very professional shepherd uh, not going to not going to be not going to be romancing anyone I don't think go speak to Joker when you're ready tell him to bring the Normandy into dock Jane Shepard the writer's story has no stakes I wouldn't say that it has no stakes I say I would say that they muddled the stakes the stakes are you have to find a home to settle in Andromeda those are huge stakes but the story does not do a good job of communicating them and so therefore it ends up feeling as though they have no stakes um, but it's not it's not a bad observation. I mean, effectively, you're right. It feels as though they have no stakes. I love the Normandy SR1. And I'm not saying I don't love the SR2. Because I do, obviously. I'm not crazy. Uh, but the SR1, genius. Actually being in the elevator, like, I would rather have this than the loading screen in 2. Paul Baker, why not Trainer? Don't, 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 don't give me ideas that I might agree to, because <laughs> I love Trainer. Uh, Alex Fulton Reagan, come on. And the Normandy's vehicle bay using a squad member's locker allows you to assign equipment to them. New equipment may be purchased from the requisition officer. Hey, here's our rec officer. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Uh, Smitty says, does Ashley stand at that spot? I thought she's usually in the hangar bay. She is, but initially after Eden Prime and before you go to the Citadel, they all kind of have unique sort of spots that they hang out in, and then they settle into their normal spot after. <laughs> uh, pay you? Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. Uh, what about licenses? What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased, but I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. FTG Almighty says, and ended up starting over my playthrough. Should have went with the default Femship instead of custom. I still don't think that we're going to be seeing tremendously great custom characters. Honestly, in all my runs of Mass Effects, like maybe the first couple were, were customs, and honestly, I'd say more than half have just been defaults. Um, so... Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that. I might try a custom Femship, especially at some point, but yeah, I went ahead and went with default. Elizabeth Swan, I'll be going. Have fun. Bye. Thank you so much for stopping by, and thank you all for continuing to be here. Um, I'm going to keep going here for a little bit longer. Maybe just get us down to the, to the Citadel real quick, and then that'll be a good stopping point. Got to romance Morinth. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Let's see what you've right got. Now. You bet, Commander. A same basic interface. Metagel upgrade and also grenade upgrade. I sell all junk. Oh, that's right. I actually have to manually add stuff to. I don't really have anything added to junk, but let's see. I wish I could also do this by. By type. Where did that? At. Breaker. And let me. I. Just buy the upgrades for. Gal. And grenade. Good. And 
go talk to Adams real quick. Engineer Adams is really, like, he's the unsung hero, man. Like, Engineer Adams is the, he's the MVP, honestly. Him and Tally, because they keep the whole ship going, you know? Let me get this codex entry real quick. Shame about Jenkins, Commander. Oh, it is a shame about Jenkins. Shame about Jenkins, Commander. That's right, we can't go into full combo with uh, Adams just yet. Back up. Oh, interesting. Leonard says uh, you should end the stream at the Citadel viewport thingy where Ashley and Caden give their comments. I want to know how that looks. That's um, I'm gonna have to go through the wards for that. That, that that's I'm not gonna promise that, but that's doable. That's a neat idea. Kind of like it. We'll see how it goes. Also, the salute. Give me the salute. Give me the salute. That, come on, you know? Like, I love the salute when you're walking around. XO is on the deck. Come on. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. Uh, Mr. Blue says the Ezo core looks rad. Yes, it does. So much of the shit. Uh, so much of the ship looks really, really good. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit contrastier. Like this this section in particular, the way that the lights look when the ship is actually so dark um, looks really cool. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it with a bit more contrast, to be honest. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. This is one of the greatest scenes in all of Mass Effect, so I'm just going to shut up and let this go. Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower, Normandy out. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. It's so an much. outrage! Oh, the council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Seren's a threat to every human colony out there. If they don't stop him, I will. Settle down, Commander. 
You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. That's why I hate politicians. And that's why I hate politicians. Ain't it the truth, Ash? Ain't it the truth? Um, okay. Uh, so a couple of you were also talking about HDR, and it's pretty much, um, I can't remember who said it, but basically, unless you have a very good HDR monitor, to me, it makes it look way worse. I, th I think there's a lot that we have to figure out about HDR still. So yeah, when HDR was on, it looked super washed out and less contrasty. So it's it's kind of a tough balance. I'm not complaining. I think the game looks great. Uh, I think the game looks great. Alliance Patrol report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during the patrol of the Argos Row Cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? That'll give us an assignment, aka side quest. But now we can go to the Argos Row Cluster and uh, the Hydra system. Do a little side quest in. This, the Council is an executive. Okay, uh, we have time here. We got about 20 more minutes, so we're going to talk to the Volus and the Elcor Ambassador, which I'm very excited for, to show you guys what that looks like, and then we can maybe head down to the wards and do that uh, scene where they overlook the wards. Dude, the Elcor look freaking jacked. These allegations are very serious. I can This is serious. My reputation is at stake. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising Dude, remark. Look at those triceps, honestly. Don't be so The, the Mass Effect 1 Elcor did not look that at way least originally. Like, did these, these Elcor are not. <sighs> Skipping tricep day. I the am shoulders, Din they got Korn. those boulder shoulders. Volus Come on now. Ambassador, is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. Uh, MD, uh, blue MD, I, I agree with you about the color. I don't know if I like it, the lighter color. I think I kind of prefer the darker color, but the model is way more detailed, and I appreciate that. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task, considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Dan. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah! This talk is wasted on the humans. Uh, let's see. Benjamin Fast says we'd look like that too if we, wa if we walked all fours like them. Yeah, absolutely. Which I think is completely... That's what's so good about it, is that from a lore standpoint, if a, if a creature of a species like that existed and they're as big as they are, and they're walking around on their arms, like, why wouldn't they have jacked arms, to be honest? Uh, why so cranky? You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. Oh, chastising rebuke, Din. 
Your species has always been granted many concessions. Bolas territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <laughs> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. I'd like to know more about the Volus. Yeah, tell me more about the I'm Volus. sure our it's history so, like, and culture was the way that you ask about people. <laughs> Earth Clan. Like, tell me more about your culture or whatever. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. Yeah, Mr. Blue, that's a great catch about the breathing with the Volus and the way that they talk. I, I, I love the fact that that little detail was changed because it makes it so much easier to, to kind of converse with them. Jane Shepard says the Elcor wear shoulder can is into battle, which is freaking epic. And I just, I, you know, one day will there be an Elcor companion? I mean, come on. We, we know we want that. Uh, okay, culture. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. In Mass Effect Andromeda Annihilation, which is the novel that sort of replaced the Orion Arc DLC that we were supposed to get in Andromeda, there is an Elcor character named Yorick, if I'm not mistaken, who is absolutely brilliant. If you've not read that book, it's actually quite good. It's probably the best of the Mass Effect Andromeda spin-off novels, and um, yeah, York was fantastic as a character. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. All right, let's talk to Zelton real quick. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong. And it is the Asari Consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Who's this Asari Consort? Curious. You have not heard. You must be new to the Citadel. Everyone knows Sha'ira, the Consort. I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Good luck with your problem. Thanks to you, human. Good day. You know what I actually love about this conversation, and I wish Mass Effect actually did this more? I wish games in general did this more? I actually forgot that you don't get a journal entry from Zeltan even if you ask where she's located. So even if you ask about her, like, where can I find her, it does not give you the journal entry. He tells you where to find her, but the quest that involves him and Shaira, he doesn't... You don't, you don't get that quest put into your journal until you've actually gone to talk to... Is it Septimus that actually starts the quest? Or maybe it's talking to the consort herself. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I just think it's interesting that Zeltan is materially involved with that quest, and yet it doesn't immediately throw it into your journal, which I actually think is good. Me personally. <laughs> Amy, Dave, Elcor, the descendants of Claude. I mean, I got, why not, right? The lighting in here, just it's subtle, but it's so much better. The shadow being cast there as you walk. I love it. Good day, Commander. The human ambassadors up the stairs, first room on the right. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel embassies. 
If you have more questions, please access Avina. What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. This uh, voice actress has always had such a pleasant voice. Now. It's just so have much nicer day. to have her mouth and her teeth Welcome not look like cardboard. So. Allow me to be your guide. Finally. Uh, let's see here. Make a quick save. It's not possible to import saves, right? That I don't remember. Um, and I, I'm going to lean towards no. Uh, Avina. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. What does that mean? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, let's see. Well, tell me about the Council. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community, while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Hmm, okay, uh, tell me about the embassies. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Uh, yeah, a couple of you have mentioned that Avina looks different, and I think it was Mandy in the chat who said it's probably based more off of the ME3 one, which is correct. Uh, Mr. D Dottedor? Hopefully I'm saying that right. Might go engineer my first playthrough just for that one scene in ME3 Omega DLC. You're right, it's epic. Uh, let's see. Um, why was humanity opposed? Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. <laughs> Village Idiot says, I love how Shepard is basically picking an argument with Alexa here. You're right, and James Shepard says, in short, she's not allowed to criticize council races. You're also right. How come the Volus were the first species to I mean, if you're the ones embassy? designing the In the early kind of years don't, following don't the formation of the council, you, right? the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Uh, just an embassy? Why weren't they made a Council race? The Council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. 
The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the citadel. DJ Flick 86 says, how's your day going? My day's going great. Fantastic. It's Mass Effect Day. I'm playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I've been waiting for this for quite some time. No matter how many times I've played Mass Effect, I love getting a chance to jump back into the world. And it feels actually kind of new with, with the updates that they've made. So it's a fantastic day for me. How's it going for you? Uh, lesser species. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, we could go through each one. Well, what the heck? Tell me about the Spectres. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Shepard is, Spectre curious is derived the from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. DJ Flick, I'm getting my copy soon on my lunch break watching you play uh, through a great game. Keep up the good work. But thank you so much for being here. And also, I mean, yeah, I'm hyped for you because it's it's great. It's great. Those moments right before you get to play a game that you've been looking forward to are kind of can almost be as good as starting to play it in a way. So, um, and if this seems a little slow to folks, you know, going through each of these dialogue options with the lore, with the world building, I get that. You know, we are going to get back to some action here in a bit, but in Mass Effect, it's a very story driven game. The lore and the world building is kind of one of the things that makes it so great. And also this section in particular, when you're walking around the Citadel, it's about learning about that world. You know, it's not just about getting to the next action sequence. It really is about immersing yourself in there. So the first time I played through this, this is exactly what I did. I was fascinated with everything. Talked to Avina, you know, tried to ask every question. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. All right, Avina, thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank Good. you for using... Got so many codex entries now. Uh, and let's see, Navina, what are we at? We're at almost two and a half hours. I am going to have to go here in a little bit, but somebody earlier had a nice idea about walking down to the wards and and getting that sort of uh, overlook spot, kind of, kind of going from there. Um, let's see, I can go through the CSEC... Yeah, let's go through that. Oh, no, that's wait. Oh, I have to talk to the council first before I can go to the wards. That is correct. Uh, what do I want to do here? Because we're going to have multiple more cutscenes to go through. Uh, let's just see. I mean, because I don't want to skip through anything or rush anything, but at the same time, there's nothing that... Like, we're not skipping past anything crazy if we just walk over to, to the Citadel Council chambers. Damn, the so good, honestly. Uh, I remember the first time I played this and found the codex and listened to every item. I think it took, yeah, a while, but I loved it. I completely agree. That would probably be a little too slow for the stream, but believe me, in my in my initial playthrough, I did the exact same thing. I've read every codex entry, listened to every codex entry. It was, um, it really felt like being immersed in the world. Uh, Steven says, what if any changes have been made to skills or leveling? Uh, well, I mean, the main one is that they have sort of a revamped level scale. So 30 can be the new level cap instead of 60. And it basically sort of, you Look know, allows you to still... There. What's it doing? 
it basically still please allows you. The Thanks, Amina. Please do not disturb the keepers. Got it. It basically allows you to hit all of your um, ability upgrades and everything within 30 levels instead of 60. Um, I currently have it set to the classic version, so it'll still be one through 60. Please do not disturb the keepers. Thanks, Amina. I just, I just have to because we're right here right now. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. To your left is one of the Keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see Keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The Keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Uh, yeah, what the heck are these things? I'd like to know more about the Keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel, though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the Tower. Any particular reason there are so many Keepers in this area? The Keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the Tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. Uh, Benjamin Fast says, do you know if the Legendary Mode is harder than Insanity or just an alternative way to lower the level cap? It doesn't change the actual difficulty, it just changes the level scaling, basically lowering the level cap. The reason why they did that is because in the original game, you were not actually supposed to be able to hit the level cap in one playthrough unless you were power leveling. Um, it was basically meant so that you could only get the achievement for hitting max level if you did a new game plus. They wanted to change that decision, so they made it 1 through 30, which is more consistent with 2 and 3 anyway. But they still have the option, and I kind of like Mass Effect with 1 through 60, so yeah, I'm doing classic mode. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. I'd like to hear more about the Council Chambers. The business of the Council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The Council Chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the Councilors, Ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. What if someone has business with the Council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the Council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. I'm scheduled to have an audience with the council. Only a handful of visitors to the Citadel are ever granted that privilege. I would be jealous, but that is outside <laughs> the scope of my program. <laughs> I forgot about that line. I would be jealous. Tell me more about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel? No one can say for sure, 
making the Relay Monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Scott9 says, I want to see a Hannah before the stream ends. There will, we'll probably at least see one. I don't know if we'll make the time to talk to one right this second. We definitely will. I'm going to talk to everybody. You know, when we do part two of this um, stream series, you know, this is, we're going to talk to everybody. We're going to see everything. But we'll probably definitely see a Hannah on the way That's out all of for the now. tower. Um, Christian Roy says, I already bought the Legendary Edition, but my main concern is the potential loss of the amazing story and lore mods from the OG trilogy, Expanding Galaxy Mod is simply amazing. I completely agree. I know that Mac Walters, the series director, has already said that they're not doing anything to specifically stop those mods from being ported over. Um, I'm kind of thinking of it in a way very similar to, like, um, Skyrim, sort of Old Rim, and then, uh, you know, Legendary Edition, uh, or I'm sorry, Special Edition of Skyrim. You know, how the mods needed to be ported over, but it was possible. Uh, let's see here. We're going to max out charm. You want more basic armor. Pistol. There, Caden is going to continue to need more electronics. And barrier. Ash is going to need fitness and combat armor yeah let's do more combat Good. oh here we go guys here we go it's the new elevator ride kind of hype for this gonna be super fast one mississippi two mississippi three mississippi the council isn't gonna ask me any questions are they i doubt it We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't. Nine seconds, guys. Nine seconds, and I can skip this and be over. The only reason why I didn't do it immediately is because the conversation was happening, but basically nine seconds. Just outstanding. Oh, here we go. Here's our boy, Garrus. I'm loving this. Lucas, thanks for stopping by. Take care, man. Have a good one. Oh, I'm hyped for this. Come on. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vakarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. You know, I love the, the armor. I do think that, you know, the, the model for his face looks good, but I don't know if it's as high resolution on the texture as what I've seen in, in PC modded Mass Effect 1. Let me get a closer look here. Who were you just talking to? That was Executor Palin, head of Citadel Security, my boss. He'll be presenting my findings on Saren's Yeah, I gotta say, his armor looks better than what I've seen in modded PC, like, you know, textures and stuff, but I don't know that his face actually looks better than what I've seen modded. Which is okay, it still looks good. And that was a, that's a pretty high bar, because they, they put a lot of work into those extra mods. Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I also, the just the lighting, ready the shadows, the depth of field. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. All of it does look better, don't get me wrong. Yeah, ME1, Garrus pre-badassery. I mean, he does look pretty dope with the facial scars, not gonna lie. Christian Roy says, handsome carapace he has. Mr. Blue MD, go into photo mode and check him out. Oh, you're kind of right. Kind of right. We'll do that. We'll do that a little bit later on. I want to I get this council conversation out of the way. Uh, not out of the way, but I do want to I do want to get us down to the wards real quick before we stop. Scott 9, his facial textures aren't as nice as the mods, but his animations are way better. I don't know if, well, maybe I would have to go back and look at it. Maybe the animations are different. I just know that the armor model, there's Kohoku over there as well. God, see, there's stuff that I don't want to skip through. Um, and I may have to talk to Kohoku too, because I don't want to just like, you know, poke my head back around in here, not having a good reason. Since we're already here, we may want to talk to Kohoku. 
God, that stare animation looks so much better on All right, Anderson, what do you got for me? The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved Ooh, in any that, way. Counselor. The investigation by Citadel See, Security okay. turned up no this evidence Turian to support your charge of treason. This Turian looks way better. Then what we've seen Mardin. Actually, I wouldn't say way blood. better, but it did. We've read the Eden like Prime reports, of Ambassador. The testimony of Depending one of traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It God may have been damn, triggered Anderson, by the beacon. The way he says that. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? There's never How can gonna I go defend well. my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like, and he has to be stopped. What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly, Mass Effect Revelations is a really good novel. It really expands a lot on 
on uh, Saren's backstory in particular. Not just Anderson's, but I think more so it adds a lot of depth to Saren that I wish had been in the game proper. Yeah, what about Shadow Broker? Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game, and the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics, doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone, not directly. He's just a resource we can use, or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Tell me about Barla Vaughn. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial uh, genius. Doesn't do anything illegal. Saying that I'm lagging. He knows I mean, at all least the what loopholes. YouTube says is that He's got an impressive client though. list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. Hope it's not too bad for everyone. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. <laughs> Turns out Jenkins was right. Uh, okay, uh, how are they chosen? How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done, like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation, but with him gone, things are still up in the air. Yeah, Demon King says Bioware has this habit of hiding lore behind novels and DLC. I don't disagree with that, but I also don't think that lore is story. Like, lore is not story, even plot is not story. A story is really a protagonist who has an obstacle that they need to grow in order to overcome. That's really what makes stories compelling. And if you like more plot details or more lore or, like, world-building stuff... Maybe it's not a bad idea that some of that is woven into novels and DLC, which in their which in their own right have unique stories. But I don't know. I've always enjoyed kind of reading those novels because they have the opportunity to deep dive in, in on things that would break up the pacing of a game more. What's their command personally. structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. Uh, yeah, Christian Roy talks about the second novel called Ascension, did a great job of painting a picture of life aboard the Corian migrant fleet. I could not agree more. And that's just stuff that would be hard to actually do in a game. Um, the amount of time they get to spend on that is really, really good. Uh, tragedy turned triumph, so is the insanity level more challenging? Insanity is very manageable in Mass Effect. I mean, if it's your first time playing it, it might seem kind of hard, but with the right strategy as far as leveling up and, and using the tactical pause often, you'll be totally fine. Shadow Broker, Barlevon, Spectres, I don't care about Harkin, um, Council, Council and the Ambassador. Our Ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree.
we're too independent and why do we bother? But there's not really an option to be like, no, yeah, we totally should do that, um, which I would have loved. Uh, anyway, what about you and Saren? You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Yeah, Saren actually tortured, well, he tortured multiple people in the book Mass Effect Revelation. He also tortured a woman who was already blown half to hell in a hospital bed. So, yeah, he's a monster is pretty accurate. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. All right. I should go. Wrap it up Good here luck, with Shepard. Anderson. I'll be over um, in the ambassador's office if you need anything else. Trying to remember what other times were brought back into this section. I guess what I'm going to do is... Caden okay, saying not for you. Yeah, let's talk to... Let's talk to Kahoku. Oh, there's also this one, Chorbin. Yeah, we got to start that over. Let's talk to Kahoku. Pick up that quest. No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the counselor's assistants, Commander. Oh wait, no. So you can't do that one yet. Okay, fair enough. I guess that is me meant to trigger since it's off Citadel. That guy's up to something. Oh, uh, here we guy? go. The one over by the keeper. Uh, and. Pick. What? Oh, no, I wasn't. Never mind. Um, yes, is there something you want? Why are you so interested in the Keepers? Keepers? I've got no interest in the keep. Don't get coy. I know what I saw. I, uh... I'm not so sure I should be talking to you about this. We're just talking. Is there something wrong with that? No. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I'm using a small scanner to gather readings on the Keepers. So far I've had mixed results. I find it difficult to get near the creatures. Uh, Mr. Blue MD, you're on a Citadel. There's always another quest. There are so many quests. And honestly, coming back to the Citadel, and like after you've gone to a planet and then getting more quests, like it's, it's phenomenal, honestly. It really is great. Uh, real deal, what are you playing on? Playing on PC with uh, controller. Why were you being so secretive about it, though? Well, technically, we're not supposed to disturb the Keepers. I don't really think my scanning disturbs them, but the authorities might so, disagree. Like the texture I'd like the to do it more openly, so but it's not really worth getting arrested over. It looks... I can help you out. I'm not worried about the authorities. I don't even know who you are. I'm Commander Shepard with the Alliance Military. Hmm. Well, I, I suppose I could use the help. You'll need this. It's the scanning device I developed. Activated each time you see a Keeper. All collected data will automatically upload to my database. I'll even send a few credits your way for each unique scan. Ah, uh, Benjamin Fast says if people ever ask me again how I can spend an entire day playing video games, I'll just answer with Mass Effect. Oh, well, I mean, you're that, that's the right answer. I mean, this is, the, this is the, I mean, I only wanted to stream for two hours and I'm going on three because it's just like, it's always easier to just keep going. What are you doing with the data once you've scanned it? And honestly, Trying to I learn might whatever be back I can tonight about for a short Keepers. one. We see again, them working everywhere. Follow me on Twitter so at the Exalted them. March. Uh, I'm a scientist. And I'll announce it. Uh, I want to know what I'm makes them tick. Again tonight for part two. I should get going then. If not, I'll be back yes, tomorrow. Yes, I have much work myself. So long, and good luck with the scanning. Okay. Down. Uh, another one. Not. No. I, just want to I absolutely do not remember by memory where all the keepers are, but I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I do, and I'm just not giving myself enough credit. Because no, you do just kind of. I make note of them before. even when I don't. Even on playthroughs where I don't do the quest, I still kind of make note of them. But we'll be back in the council chambers again, so. 
I can't remember if there's one on that side, but I don't think... Don't be ridiculous. The Volus won't be joining the Council for years. I'm not so sure. The humans are making a strong push, and you can bet the Volus will be right on their coast. Absolutely. Okay, that. Yeah, that. Bring this down. Pass up. A saturate? Not a little more saturation. I'll actually put the film grain on for this. Excellent. Uh, okay. Oh, that's right. There's one kind of above and to the right. You're you're right about the key. We'll get it back. We'll get it later when we make Spectre. I love the camera zoom I too. Can't believe the council ignored all the evidence against Saren. Saren's one of their best operators. It's only natural they take his word over ours. Oh, so now we just chase leads while this smug Turian runs around with his Geth troopers. That's politics, Chief. I hate politics. Brilliant. I love it. Just enough time for the conversation and we're out. I mean, God, it's so good. Okay, got another thing here. Uh, I don't think there's one. Okay, so we're going to head down to the wards. There is a Hanar over here. I'm actually, just because we're a little tight on time, not going to talk to this Hanar just yet. We will come back and do the Hanar quest next time. Oh, don't want to do that. There's a Hanar looking very shiny. You're creating a public disturbance. I'm gonna it's head down to the wards real quick. I'm really just loving. I, I honestly, I'm loving Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I love the character models, the updated textures. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial Shadows. investors you know, are pulling their support for future projects. It could be better. Proponents of expanded human um, colonization but insist overall, that I Eden it's, Prime it's an was an immense, isolated immense case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. Find him down here. He always stops in for a few games of Quasar before he makes his drop. So many other quests too. I mean, we're we're gonna make several trips throughout the Citadel. So, and here's a keeper. Um, there's we're gonna make multiple sort of loops around the Presidium and the wards. So, Williams, so rest so assured, happy we're not to sign gonna... on with Commander Shepard. I'm not sure, Lieutenant. Every time I think I have a handle on things, I will make sure the universe banks hard quests. to port. Well, don't let anybody know. A big gun and a confident attitude will get you through a lot in life. Dude, those fast elevator rides might be the best thing in the in the uh, legendary edition. Loving it. Oh, here we go. The wards have never looked so good. Lights, the shadows. Brilliant. Save here. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Brilliant. Look at that view. The, the ward arms have never looked this good, this like res this high resolution and unpixelated. It used to be just a blurry mess, really. This isn't a station, it's a city. There must be millions here. It can't be possible to track everyone coming and going. This makes Jump Zero look like a portage on, and it's the largest deep space station the Alliance has. Jump Zero is big, but this is a whole nother scale. Look at the ward arms. How do they keep all that mass from flying apart? The Council represents more races than I thought. No wonder they're careful with newcomers. They probably just want to keep everything running. It has to be hard keeping all these cultures working together. Or maybe they just don't like humans. Why not? We've got oceans, beautiful women, this emotion called love. According to the old vids, we have everything they want. When you put it that way, there's no reason they wouldn't like you. I mean, us. Humans. Ma'am. You don't take much shore leave, do you, LT? <laughs> All right, laugh it up, Chief. I appreciate the thought, Alenko, but we're on duty here. Uh, I, I, ma'am. I'll walk drag, ma'am. It's a very subtle thing, but the idea that them seeing this visual, the fact that it kind of changes Shepard's perspective a little bit, is, and the same thing for Caden, it's a really, really interesting idea. They are seeing the galaxy through a wider lens. They are seeing more of what makes it so intricate and dangerous. And I think that's a great opportunity for them to put a line in there like, now I understand why they're so careful with newcomers. Great world building, great, great stuff overall. Um, gonna go ahead and make a save here and we're gonna go ahead and stop here. Um, this has been it's been a great time. First of all, I was so excited to play this. I'm so glad that you all have been able to uh, to join me. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed here. Hit the bell notification icon to know when we go live and when podcasts and everything are posted. Uh, follow me on Twitter at the Exalted March. I will keep a uh, keep everyone updated as far as when we're going to be when we're going to be streaming, etc. Uh, on the channel. So. Uh, thank you all for being here. I hope everyone has a tremendous rest of your day, and we will see you.